Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to call this meeting to order of the Mayor and Board of Commissioners for September 14th, 2021. Can I get the roll call, please? Yes. Commissioner Braun? Yes. Commissioner Shepard? Here. Commissioner Pearson? Here. Commissioner Warnick? Here. Let the record show that you do have a quorum. Will you rise with me for the Pledge of Allegiance? Pledge of Allegiance, Pledge of allegiance to, the to the flag of the United, United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands. stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. In light of the 20th anniversary of September 11th, I would like to have a moment of silence uh, in honor of those lost that day, uh, the survivors, their families. Uh, hard to believe it's been 20 years. Thank you. We don't have any public presentations this evening. We do have a few business meeting items. Town Administrator, do you have resolution 2021-09? Yes, I do. Okay, so um, the um, as we've discussed before, um, we've had uh, a couple unique circumstances brought to our attention in regards to certain types of usage of water that does not require any kind of discharge into a sewer system. Um, and at, at your direction, I created some draft language that would basically make a modification to our utility rate. If you remember a couple years ago, we did the table of sewer and water rates um, that was part of the pro forma that Davenport did for us to, to raise the rates in order to pay the loans off for the uh, sewer and water. So there's an opportunity to add a, a sub note to that when talking about how we're gonna bill people for sewer and water. Um, this resolution would basically create a new subsection D that would talk about what essentially is a closed water consumption system. Um, so this is something that we had talked about in the past, and if, if you would like, I'll, I'll read the resolution into the minutes. Thank you. All right. So what you have before you is uh, Town of Rising Sun Resolution 202109. It's titled Utility Rate Modification, Utility Rates for Closed Water Consumption Systems. The first two boilerplate <coughs> items will skip the third paragraph. Whereas section 8-302 of the Code of Ordinances of the Town of Rising Sun, titled Water and Sewer Charges, authorizes the mayor and commissioners of the Town of Rising Sun to establish by resolution both a water consumption charge and a sewer usage charge. And whereas the recently invested, uh, the town recently in invested roughly $26 million into upgrading the town's water and sewer infrastructure, and whereas the town commissioned a water and sewer rate study, which was incorporated into a water and sewer rate table that was adopted as part of resolution 2016-03, and for the purposes of developing a utility rate schedule to raise the needed funds over a 10 year period to pay off the loans associated with the upgrades. And whereas commercial businesses connected to the town's water and sewer infrastructure have a water meter that measures the flow of water provided by the town with such readings also being used to determine the amount of wastewater that is used for bathrooms, sinks, drains, or other processes that are discharged into the town's sewer conveyance and treatment system. And whereas in addition to the needs for potable water and waste disposal, some businesses require the use of additional water in non-traditional ways, such as found in water-based product production, cooling, and other similar industrial type processes that result in the consumption of water that is significantly unequal to the volume of discharge of wastewater into the town's sewer conveyance and treatment system. And whereas for the purposes of this resolution, these systems will be referred to as closed water consumption systems, or CWCS, that will be further defined as closed water consumption systems, 
a business that uses town-provided water for product production, cooling, and other similar industrial-type processes in which there is no discharge, drainage, or piping of waste byproducts into the town sewer conveyance and treatment system, and the water is 100% consumed in the process. A closed water consumption system shall have a separate independent metered water supply from the main water supply. Substitute wastewater treatment systems or processes cannot be employed to offset the discharge of legally permissible wastewater into the town sewer conveyance and treatment systems. A closed water consumption system must be properly permitted and approved by the town as part of the building and zoning permitting process. And whereas this unequal consumption of water versus waste discharge creates a significant expense for the business related to the processing of water that is consumed in a closed water consumption system and not discharged into the town sewer conveyance and treatment system. And whereas the mayor and commissioners wish to address this issue by amending the above water and sewer rate table by adding a new sub D to read as commercial businesses connected to the town's water and sewer infrastructure and operating under a closed water consumption system as defined above shall pay the current approved town water rate for all water consumed but shall not be responsible for the current approved sewer rate since there is no discharge into the town sewer conveyance and treatment system. Therefore, be it enacted and further resolved that the mayor and commissioners of the town of Rising Sun passed, approved, and adopted this resolution on this 14th day of September 2021. All right. Resolution 2021-09. Could I get a motion to approve? So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussions regarding this? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Thank you. Uh, I believe, Town Administrator, you've been working with Commissioner Shepard on Resolution 2021-10. Is that, that correct? Is, that is correct. Okay. What you have before you is essentially a, um, a request to install uh, two additional stop signs at the intersections of Wilson Avenue, Douglas Courts, and Cherry Street. Um, these two additional stop signs would be placed on Wilson Avenue in order to have traffic that is either going north or south on Wilson Avenue have to come to a stop, thereby creating a four-way stop sign controlled intersection. The hope here is to try to slow traffic down it runs down towards the park by way of making the left or right off of Main Street on the Wilson and then essentially gunning it down the hill and by the park. Um, you're going to see in, uh, in your packet you have the engineer's <coughs> visual of uh, the stop signs and the stop bars and then you have an email that outlines the recommendation from the um, town engineer, KCI engineers, that after looking, uh, doing field surveys and taking into consideration uh, the speeding, that they agreed to the four-way stop sign that would be installed consistent with recognized standards would be a good idea uh, to put at that intersection. So if you'd like, I would read that resolution into the minutes. Thank you. Uh, Town of Rising Sun Resolution 2021-10, a resolution authorizing the installation of additional stop signs at the <clears throat> intersection of Wilson Avenue, Douglas Court, and Cherry Street. We'll skip the first two boilerplate, whereas, go to the third one, whereas pursuant to section 4-103 of the Town Code titled Power of the Board of Commissioners to Regulate Traffic Control Devices and Signs, the Board of Commissioners shall have the authority to erect or construct traffic control devices or signs to include stop signs. And whereas the town recently repaved Wilson Avenue between Mow and Route 273 <coughs> Telegraph Road and Coast Court to include wider pedestrian sidewalks leading to Veterans Memorial Park. 
And whereas the town continues to field speeding complaints from residents along Wilson Avenue, and as a result, had previously requested the town's engineer, KCI Technologies Incorporated, to perform a review of the intersection of Wilson Avenue, Cherry Street, and Douglas Court for the possible consideration of installing two additional stop signs in the intersection for traffic heading north and south along Wilson Avenue and at the intersection of Douglas Court and Cherry Streets and for the purposes of slowing the traffic down. And whereas upon reviewing the field conditions at the named intersections, KCI came back with the attached recommendation that supports the installation of the additional stop signs as shown on the attached schematic. And whereas the mayor and commissioners wish to make our roadways and pedestrian sidewalks both safe and convenient for our residents, and wish to accept the engineer's recommendation as provided and to proceed with the installation of the additional stop signs and appro appropriate pavement markings as described. Now, therefore, be an act of it further resolved that the mayor and commissioners have passed, approved, and adopted this resolution on this 14th day of September 2021. And, Mayor, if I might add, we do have uh, both engineers, Ryan Flickinger and Scott Koenig, Scott's the one who basically uh, managed this stop sign uh, initiative. So if you have any questions, he is online to answer those questions. Does anyone have any questions? Yes, I do. Okay. Would we, would it be wise to put a, another sign at Kirk's uh, Road and Wilson Avenue that says stop ahead? That's, that's actually on the diagram. I that's, didn't see, I yeah, didn't see is, it on. Hold on. It's actually I, not all the way down there. It's 100 feet from oh, the intersection. Oh, okay. That's probably why I didn't <clears throat> see it. Hold on, Dave. I okay. eventually will get this. So if you look, it's right there. Okay. Yep. That answered my question. Yep. All right. Anyone else have any other questions? Uh, yeah, I mean, are we, because uh, I also see in the recommendation the double yellow line as well as the stop. I assume the stop bars we're going to do with the, yes. the stop line. And yeah. then are we also doing the double yellow line? Yes. Okay. Because um, I, I know those don't require us to approve right. LEO line. So I yeah, got that's that. being done it's under just, Chris We're just following Wiggins. MUTCD. Yeah, that's being done under Chris Wiggins. Gotcha. Okay. okay. Fair enough. I make a motion we, we accept the resolution 2021-10. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Commissioner Shepard, do you have any discussion? All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Passes. Thank you. Last under business meeting items is a modified paving of Crothers Avenue 2021 11. Um, so, the concept behind this is as you recall, back I believe in roughly June, the town of uh, the, the, the mayor and commissioners approved of uh, being able to award uh, the bids for the 2021 street repaving contract. And that approval was uh, also, that approval also authorized getting uh, the required financing because w these are large ticket items and we always finance streets over a 10 year, with a 10 year note essentially, and pay them off over a 10 year period. So the authorization was to proceed forward with that with a dollar amount limit of monthly or annual payments of, of uh, no more than $100,000 um, a year in total annual payments. Um, the bids came in significantly no, uh, lower than what was expected. So um, whenever we do the financing for these, I always make a point to request additional money from the lending institutions because as you get out of the field, you start to realize that maybe you should replace this section of sidewalk. In the case of Mason Run, uh, Commissioner Pearson, we were originally going to stop at the bottom of the hill, but then when we got out there, we noticed some deep depressions in Mason Run, so we extended it up about another 75 feet yeah. to pick up that area. So we always build flexibility in it. Uh, to be able to take on more projects. But in this case, as you recall, um, about a month and a half, we were awarded a grant through the Royal Maryland Council 
to uh, get some money to help pay for the replacement of water lines on Mount Street and to also install conduit for future broadband um, cable to be extended. Um, part of that grant application also included repaving a curb to curb uh, over top of Mount Street. So essentially what we're suggesting here is that project has to be done by June of 2022. So realistically, we're going to be breaking ground in March or April to do this. If we were to move forward with, with what could be upwards of $183,000 under the current contract to pave Mount Street, we're essentially just going to tear that all up. Uh, in April, and obviously we don't, I don't want to call it wasting money because it gets misconstrued, but we don't want to throw good money out the bed and do it twice. So what we're suggesting is reallocating those original uh, project monies to go towards other streets that um, are in need of paving that might have been delayed until next year or the following year. And I just want to remind you and bring your attention to uh, back in 2015, the town commissioned KCI to do a roadway um, evaluation or do an evaluation of the road conditions, the sidewalks, and the stormwater uh, catch basins on the street. And they were all graded. And that's what we've been using over the years to come up with our paving schedules. So what we're suggesting is move Mount Street out of this sequence and then replace it with Crothers at this time. However, we're also recommending going one step further that, and I guess the concept would be, is if the elected body subscribes, if you will, to the study that was done, um, we've got a lot of room left in this financing to add some other streets, move them up in the priority list. So this resolution goes to not only have you approve adding Crothers to it, but to also pave the parking lot at Veterans Memorial Park, uh, because under uh, Commissioner Warnick's direction, we are adding some in-house stormwater management piping in there to try to stop the water that always collects on the service walk um, going from the parking lot to the tot lot. So we want to eliminate that by putting some drains, horizontal drains or lateral drains in the upper <coughs> part of the Kirk Street parking lot, which we're going to be digging that all up. The parking lot's in bad shape anyway, so once we get the piping in, why don't we have the contractor pave that section too? So we don't have a dollar amount for that. Um, so what we're suggesting is we're telling you what Crothers is now, the cost, but if, if it's all right with the board, we would, the staff and the engineer would have the flexibility to slide these additional projects in under the original approval of no more than $100,000 in uh, financing. Um, and then with whatever, um, as long as it meets the dollar amount of the financing that we're about to approve. Um, in the next couple of days. So basically what we're saying is to give us the flexibility to not have to come back before the board, especially when timing can be, you know, we don't meet again for two weeks and a lot can happen in the next two weeks. So that's essentially what this resolution is asking your blessing for. And if you would like, I'll read that resolution into the minutes. Please, thank you. Okay. Um, resolution 2021-11. A resolution authorizing the town administrator to approve modifications to the previously approved 2021 paving contract based upon engineering recommendations. Uh, we'll skip the first two whereas, go to the third one. Whereas pursuant to section C-17 of the town charter, the commissioners of Rising Sun may provide for the construction of sewers, grading, paving, and lighting uh, the streets, sidewalks, and alleys of said town. And whereas the town previously approved resolution 2021-03, which authorized the town administrator to award the 2021 paving contract and to secure the necessary financing to complete the project with annual loan payment on a 10-year note not to exceed $100,000. And whereas the 2021 paving contract included a portion of Mount Street to be paved 
from Pogue Avenue to Keppel's Mill at an estimated construction cost of roughly $160,658. $160, and whereas the town was recently <coughs> awarded a grant to replace the water lines and install broadband conduit along Mount Street, with the construction expected to begin in the spring of 2022. And whereas if the town proceeds with the Mount Street portion of the 2021 paving contract, the repaving of Mount Street will be removed and dug up as part of the water line and broadband conduit installation. And whereas the financing that was secured provides a great deal of flexibility to add and modify the actual areas to be paved and the sidewalk replacement work to be performed. And whereas it has been determined that the original scope of the Mount Street paving area can be scaled back and replaced with a milling and repaving of the center of the road and targeted patching of various road imperfections and to stabilize the road over the winter at a reduced cost and thereby reducing the amount of money lost due to construction and installation of the water line and broadband conduit project. And whereas in order to maximize the funding available for the 2021 paving project, the town's engineer, KCI Technologies Incorporated, has provided the attached recommendation to add Crothers Avenue between Browntown Lane and Cooper Avenue to the 2021 paving project at a projected cost of $60,725.06. And whereas, and furthermore, the town administrator is authorized to add other areas to the 2021 street repaving project that were detailed in the previous 2015 KCI Technologies Incorporated report, which evaluated and graded all town roads, sidewalks, and stormwater drains for the purpose of creating a priority list of projects to be addressed over a period of time and to further approve the paving of the parking lot at Veterans Park upon completion of some drainage piping that will be installed at the park to eliminate standing water that continues to collect at the service entry walk from the parking lot and the playground equipment. All of these projects will fall within the previously approved financing. Now, therefore, be it enacted and further resolved that the mayor and commissioners have passed, approved, and adopted this resolution on this 14th day of September 2021. And again, we have uh, Scott Koenig, who basically oversees this with KCI on the line, if there's any questions. And this includes the, I'm sorry, this includes the digging out of the section that continues to break up on Crothers and filling yes. that in with 12 inches. It, it, it's going to be a complete, okay. it's also going to include a uh, wider pedestrian sidewalks okay. in there, which will narrow Crothers a little bit, but there's enough width to be able to do that. So we're going to yeah. get bigger, wider pedestrian sidewalks and finally a paved surface from end to end. Good. Okay. We are not going to be installing water lines under this road. Crothers? Yeah. No. no. Any more? Comments, questions? Could I get a motion to approve resolution 2021-11? So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Citizens input. Would anyone <coughs> like to speak this evening? I have a question. Absolutely. Um, how do I, who do I talk to about getting the no outlet signs up in Sunrise Estate? We have a lot of people that come up. I think they think they can get the big sideway and they come up the road and they make UEs constantly. Commissioner Shepard. That's who you should reach out to. I'll talk to you. Okay. Anyone online would like to speak this evening? I'm not seeing any uh, residents in the waiting room. All right, moving forward into staff reports. Office manager, Judy. Well, the first, the first department I want to talk about is Public Works. I, I really want to thank um, the team for stepping up. Uh, we had some vacations and different things and they were very light staffed. We have hired uh, another person to join that team. They will be joining that team on September 27th. And I'm sure they look forward to that. The person's getting their physical and background check. It was interesting when I was putting together some things that they've been taking care of. You sometimes don't think about what they actually get done in a week. Uh, giving you an example, eight tons of yard waste in a four week period of time. That's a, an average of about two tons a week that they're picking up and, and taking care of. They 
respond to all of the work orders that we issue here in, in town hall. They've responded to 264 in the last year, so that's quite a number of work orders that they work. They mow all the grass. They do road repairs. They work emergency things, and they've just done an outstanding job, and I just wanted to draw attention to that for them and say thank you. Um, looking at some administrative things that are really notable, uh, we are still continuing to build uh, the electronic uh, presence. We have 568 customers who are now getting an electronic bill. It's really one of the most beneficial things I think we've started, and especially as we continue to have more COVID and more limitations. We handled another, in addition to 568 emails, we actually handled 326 calls in this past month. Going into financials, some general talking points. Uh, we, I, I know, I don't know if you're aware, but we did start aggressively working to get the audit completed because we had been um, having some things that caused it to be, be delayed. We now anticipate having the 2021 audit completed and ready to be presented no later than the second week of October. We were hoping to have it finished by the end of September. Um, in looking at financials, I, I, you, do, I, you do have a packet. I'm going to go over the first three pages with you and the rest you can take home. It's just a list of the things in the back are just lists of checks uh, which are have either cleared or outstanding that were written from July 1 to August 31st. Taking a look at the general fund, we have, uh, we're have we accounting for the revenue coming in from real estate tax differently this year. We actually asked the auditor what was the best method, and they said the best practice would be to realize the revenue as we receive it. We have received $500,000 in real estate so far, as you can see. That's about 40% of what we anticipate. Uh, we also, in debt service, have uh, collected $163,000. we have collected $701,000 in um, revenue for the um, general fund, which is about 28% of what we anticipated when we budgeted for the year. Um, after two months of operation, if we look at what we're ag actually averaging the general fund, it's about $150,000, anticipating about a million eight, which is going would also uh, prevent us from having to go to any uh, reserve funds to, to finish the year. That's, that's a really high level right now, but that's, that's where I... When I look at it and project it out, this is where I think we're going to be. If you go into uh, looking at the, the next one is looking at the water fund revenue and expenses through uh, August 31st. We have averaging about $83,000 in build revenue for uh, the water department. And right now it, it, it's showing that we're uh, operating at um, $80,000 profit. There's some things that come in, they've, they've got a $64,000 payment they'll come in. There's just, just different things that will offset some of that. And uh, Maryland Bay Restoration comes out of that. So we're, we're still operating very profitably in the water, but not as lucrative as it looks. So just be aware of that. If you look at depreciation, always remember it's there for financial statements. It's not something we look at when we're looking at operating revenue. In, this, in the sewer fund, the, the thing that we look at there is we're averaging about $70,000 a month looking as uh, monthly billing. We're also um, tracking at a, at a loss, but you have to consider that with the bigger USDA loans, they are billed quarterly, so we, we see that interest expense and some different things that will balance out as you look at a quarter over time. So um, not anticipating having a, a need to go into reserve funds there as yet either. So, Financially, we are performing well. Cash flow, we're performing well. And like I said, the, the back of that is just your checks and some things like that. Any questions at all uh, about financials or anything that, that you would like different? Thank you, Judy. You're very welcome. Town Administrator, do you have a report? Um, I wanted to sort of piggyback on what Judy was talking about. Um, a little bit more specific, though, to the storm that we recently had. We really haven't had a chance to talk about too much about the storm. And I want to start out by saying what a phenomenal job our public works department and police department did um, during the storm itself. One of the more significant things um, that at times got a little overwhelming was down at the wastewater treatment plant we had a tremendous amount of water that was basically shearing over 
the farmland from above and just literally washing into the lagoon. It was bypassing the stream there and just shearing right into the lagoon itself. And as we've always talked about before, although the lagoon technically has been decommissioned, so to speak, it is still considered something that we don't want that to be overflowing into the, into the creek around it. Um, the water got as high as about, uh, I'm going to say about a good foot and a half uh, high, washing over the road. If you're familiar with going into the sewer plan and you pass the new sewer plan and start to head back towards the lagoon, in that area there, we had about, we had water about a foot and a half deep. Um, Billy um, and I sort of babysat that for a couple of hours while the chief, uh, he's not here, uh, but him, he and his people did a great job. Um, he babysat uh, Buck's Restaurant, uh, Bottom of the Hill Grill were, was flooding down there. Um, the Legion, uh, Commissioner Warnick was out for a while. Uh, Mayor Marion was putting a lot of updates and keeping people up to date on uh, social media. The sewer plant was really getting um, interesting to say the least because we were, we just were at a loss of what to do with all this water. But we were able to get Billy on the backhoe, and we were able to locate out in the marsh area where we thought the drain for the stream was supposed to be. And the reason why I say that is there's terminology called freeboard. And freeboard is basically when you're damming water or having water channel through it. Freeboard is how much capacity is within that, in this case, uh, stream bed to be able to fill up before it would overflow. We had a lot of freeboard. We had upwards of four to five feet of freeboard from the surface water in the stream. That water was just bypassing the stream and coming across on to into the uh, lagoon itself. So we just had enough extension on the boom on the on the uh, backhoe to reach out. We pulled some debris out after poking around. We heard a loud pop and a very large whirlpool just was there for about the next hour and a half. But it was so significant that it literally dried up all the water that was coming off the farmland um, and we were able to stop it for the first wave. The second wave that we got, which really hit the town in the gut, even with the whirlpool, we had even more water going into the lagoon than we had the first time. And at one point, Billy and I were getting a little nervous that we were going to be stuck out there um, on that boom. We didn't know what the condition of the boom would be on the lagoon, and we were joking that they, you know, we might have to move up. We always call it the upper 40 up there behind the lagoon. We were joking that we were going to have to call Chief Peterson and have him airlift us out of there because we were going to get trapped um, in there. Um, so we did have a lot of water going into the lagoon. Um, the other interesting thing, and I believe at the last meeting I talked about this, the amount of water through I&I &I coming into the plant. And at the last meeting, I reported to you that we had 2 million gallons coming in as a result of that previous storm <clears throat> that dumped 10 inches of water at the sewer plant because they are required to have a rain gauge to track the amount of water. We had 2 million gallons of water coming into the closed system. And again, I think it's important to note, when I talk about the water coming into the lagoon, that's not part of the total water, that's not part of the water coming into the wastewater treatment plant. The wastewater treatment plant is a closed system, basically, of manholes and uh, sewer lines in the street. We had 3.3 million gallons of water coming into the wastewater treatment plant at the height of this last storm over a million gallons more than we had in the previous storm, and we thought that was a lot. Um, under normal circumstances, the town gets roughly six to, anywhere from six to seven, eight hundred thousand gallons on a good heavy summer storm. The operator at the plant told me that prior to the two million, he had gotten about one million in there, uh, but he had never seen two million, and he was really getting nervous with three million. We were on the verge of overflowing 
the wastewater treatment plant. There was so much water coming in. Now, fortunately, that was throughout the region. Um, all the wastewater treatment plants were reporting difficulties with it. Um, so we have, uh, with the Public Works Department, um, we are now going out into all of our low-lying areas to try to identify any potential manholes that might be open. Um, now, the, the thing is, all of our manholes, are t manhole lids are technically bolted down to the concrete casings. From my experience from in the past, I wouldn't be surprised if we're going to find one of those concrete casings with the manhole is still bolted to it, but the hydrostatic pressure of that sewer line might have just broken one of these 40, 50-year-old casings off. So last week we had some difficulty getting through some of the low-lying areas, one because of overgrowth and two because of how marshy and wet that it was. So we're hoping to pick up that exercise in the next coming days to try to figure out how we're getting three million gallons in the system because it's, it's not, our streets are not really flooding any more than they ever have before. And I don't think we're getting three million gallons of water in people's basements in the town of Rising Sun. Remember, we talked about sump pumps being illegally connected. We had nobody calling in a panic that their house had, you know, five, six feet of water in it. So I don't think it's, it's related to any significant increase in I&I &I in terms of sump pumps or flooding of our town streets. I really believe we might have something wide open in one of our low-lying areas. Um, I reported some of the other issues that we had related to the storm. Um, we had some areas that really got hit hard. Bucks um, Restaurant um, and the liquor store got hit uh, pretty hard with some flooding. Uh, Johnson's Liquors lost some uh, product from the flooding. Um, Rising Hills Drive and Main Street uh, the old Harrington auto body down at, at that intersection there, they took on a lot of water and had damage to their parking lot. Uh, the Legion, the Rising Sun uh, American Legion, um, they had some significant damage uh, down there with water literally coming in one door and attempting to go out the other door. Buck's Restaurant was the same way. They had water coming in one way and, and out the other way. The Legion, we estimate at one point, had about eight to 10 inches in the hall area because you can see the water line. It, if you recall, they have some carpeting that comes down on the wall, and you can see the brown water line. And for reference, if you've been in the hall, they have that stage. We believe that stage was darn near underwater completely, and that's about a, a 10 inch rise. They also have some pictures of the glass doors that when you pass the kitchen and go out into the pavilion area, there was water up against those glass doors. It was every bit of 10 to 12 inches high in that area. So they took on a lot of water. And then last but not least, we had the flooding of the Mill Creek Trailer Park, Mobile Home Park down by the dog park. And our dog park took some damage too. Down at the um, Mobile Home Park, there, are, there were 21 trailers that were affected down there. Um, 16 of them have been declared unfit for habitation because they've taken water on in the first floor. So by definition, they, uh, they become uninhabitable until some mitigation takes place. Um, the properties on the left-hand side, uh, two, four, six, eight, and 10, they had water that went underneath the skirting and they had some damage, but it did not get up into the trailers themselves. Um, the uh, Cecil County Emergency Services through the Red Cross has provided housing for 14 of the families. Um, there's a, a couple other people that have, have gotten their own housing with family members. Um, we're in the process of doing evaluations on a town and countywide basis, which will be coupled with evaluations done statewide to see if Maryland would qualify for FEMA federal disaster relief. 
Um, so there's various criteria that has to take place in order to do that. Um, and so the, um, we've identified the 16 trailers as unfit for habitation. We've had the owner remove all the flooring, all the cabinets, uh, bring the drywall or wall material, remove it 24 inches up so that we can uh, make sure we're properly treating any moisture or water that would, could lead uh, to mold. Um, and we're in the process of seeing what the next steps are with FEMA to see if there's any disaster relief funds available. All in all, I submitted a report for $2.1 million of total damage just on those properties that I mentioned, with um, the trailer park accounting for $1.7 million of damage and the Rising Sun Legion accounting for, I believe it was about $130,000 of damage, with their biggest item being their parking lot. Um, Commissioner Pearson, I know you remember from having a conversation with Chris Wiggins, yeah. the cost of the polymers and all that go into paints and blacktop have really driven it very high. And the Legion arguably has lost roughly 90%, if not more, of their parking lot. They had a lot of it that scaled off, but the next day I was able to see a lot of the pavement that was pushed up and still had pockets of water underneath it that was seeping out. So they're going to have a big uh, ticket to replace that parking lot. So this is going to be a long process. Um, we have residents in the trailer park that are calling um, to see when they can get back in their properties. It's a long process. Um, the county and the Red Cross are going to continue to provide housing for the foreseeable future, and we're working with FEMA to try to get some answers for people as soon as possible. And that I believe we've, uh, town administrator, we've also uh, we put a dumpster down there. We got a dumpster for them, correct? Yes, we've actually done multiple dumpsters to try to help move that along. Um, the town, through its uh, uh, trash hauler has been providing dumpsters down there to clean everything up, help clean everything up. All right. Question. Sure. Yeah. When, if and when they, they do try to make those trailers habitable again, and it's more than 50%, they will have to bring it up the current code? That, that is the direction that it's trending towards. We have, to, we have to finish the evaluations of 50%, and we have to see what FEMA is going to dictate from that point. So I have a bunch of reports I have to turn into FEMA. Thank you. Uh, town engineer, do you have anything this evening? Sure. Um, this is Ryan Flickinger. I'll, I'll go first, and I'll pass it off to, to Scott. Can everyone hear me OK? Yep. Yes. All right. Well, good evening, everyone. Um, just a couple quick updates on the water, wastewater end of things. Um, Calvin had mentioned the uh, Mount Street uh, broadband and, and water line project. Um, that project needs to move at a rapid pace. Um, I know there's already been one meeting on the topic, and um, we have another meeting scheduled on Friday with Calvin, um, and what we're going to have deliverables prepared for you, Calvin, at that meeting. We'll have the maps that you have requested along with the pricing for the different scenarios <coughs> discussed. So we will, we'll make sure that project stays on pace um, to, to meet the, the funding requirements. The other topic I wanted to touch on, um, Calvin had mentioned I&I &I, um, inflow and infiltration for the sanitary sewer system with those high peak flows coming from something from those storms. Um, I think the town's definitely heading in the right direction. Uh, looking at those manholes, there's a bunch, there's a, several low hanging fruit items you can you can address for an I and I study before you really get into the the details that become a little bit more costly and time consuming. Um, and looking at those manholes is certainly one thing. You already, you already touched on um, illegal um, sump pit hookups. The other thing that I wanted to just uh, bring to your attention, um, Calvin, as a follow to our conversation last week, you know, back in the 30s and 40s, and I think up until the late 40s, 
sanitary sewer systems were actually designed to allow stormwater to inflow into the piping. It was considered a, a benefit to help with flooding flooding issues back back then when the regulations weren't nearly as tight about making sure to keep wastewater and stormwater separate. I'm saying that just as a another low hanging fruit item, um, you know, terracotta pipe especially, those joints were purposely designed and installed to not be watertight. I have not run across any wastewater piping in Rising Sun that's that old, but it would be worth just a, a, a check to make sure that we don't still have pipe in the ground that was intentionally designed to convey stormwater pipes dur during a storm. Um, so that can be a follow-up item, Kevin, that you and I can also discuss on, on Friday. Um, those, those are the two main topics that are, that are hot on my plate this week. Anybody have any questions for me before I uh, pass it off to Scott for the municipal piece? Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Scott, you're up. Thanks, Ryan. Thanks, Ryan. Good evening, everybody. The, uh, the paving project is what I'd like to talk about first. As we said at the last meeting, I believe, um, Louise Court has been paved. They are still waiting on the uh, striping contractor. There's been a supply chain issue with getting some of the paint. So they've been delayed on the, the striping of the parking areas. It doesn't appear to have caused any problems at this point, or at least no problems that have reached us uh, from a complaint standpoint. The contractor has been uh, completing curb sidewalk and driveway apron repairs on both Turtleback Court and is soon to complete the repairs on Mason Run Lane. We expect those repairs for the concrete to be done either late this week or early next week, and the contractor will be moving over to the bottom area of Pearl Street uh, for concrete repairs. We also expect that, uh, based on current conversations, they may come in late next week with the, with the milling machine and begin milling on Turtleback Court so it will be weather contingent. Uh, we do not want to leave the base uh, of the road exposed for any amount of time. I think the biggest risk we have is the, the engineers have said from the field that the thickness of the pavement mat doesn't appear to be very thick in some places. So when we mill, we may be down to dirt or stone. I have to do a little bit of extra work there. So uh, we do expect them to mobilize late next week to hopefully pave both Turtleback Court and Mason Run Lane. Once the concrete work is done on Pearl Street, uh, I think we'll be moving over to the Carruthers as was approved. And then uh, working with the town manager to confirm that we're gonna be doing maybe the additional parking lot and any other uh, work that's, that's slated uh, to meet the contract requirements. As far as I know, we've had uh, a very good relationship with the community. The contractor has worked with homeowners. Uh, the staff engineer inspector that's out there has been working with homeowners to make sure that uh, they have access to their properties, that we're addressing concerns and responsive to any questions that come about. The residents have been great, and uh, so far the contract is going very smoothly from our standpoint. So hopefully everyone feels the same way. And if there's any complaints, please convey them to me. Uh, we're also working with the town manager on a couple other projects that he's, um, I think, identified that he has interest in. I know there's some interest in development in the community, so we'll probably be working with uh, other engineers to help uh, get their projects moving forward, either for consideration or for construction. So. We're happy to be of service. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Well, can I, Calvin, can I say? Sure. First of all, Scott, the, the representative you have on site in Summerhill is extremely helpful. She has been answering any questions that I have because a lot of people ask me the questions first. Um, she, the whole time, except for possibly over the Labor Day when they kind of left a pile of stone a little further out, but that, that resolved its issue. People got around it after we asked the, one of the residents not to park their two cars that, across from it. 
I do want you to know that when you start on Turtleback, you, more than likely you will run into dirt. Um, experience up there when we have done paving prior, we have found that there was really nothing in the substrate, just possibly maybe an inch of stone. So please don't be surprised if when you start up there on Turtleback that you don't hit dirt right off the bat. So. I appreciate the forewarning. <laughs> Any other questions for Scott? All right, thank you. Thank you very much. All right, moving into the mayor's report. As you know, September is Donate Life Month. Uh, we are, um, we have our lights down Main Street Green uh, in honor of Benjamin Larson and to promote uh, organ donation. Uh, you can sign up on your license or pick up a form here at Town Hall. Um, be a donor because you can definitely save multiple lives by doing so. We also have teal uh, for ovarian cancer in honor of Terry Bader. Um, Terry was the wife of our longtime Public Works employee, Daryl Bader. Uh, she lost her battle to ovarian cancer. Uh, and one of the last things that she did was come in and talk with me about turning the town teal. Um, so we do that in honor of Terry. I know that uh, all of us send our prayers to Daryl and his family, um, and we often think of him. Uh, the town administrator um, and our public works employees, as well as Chief Peterson, have been down to the Mill Creek Mobile Home Park almost on a daily basis. Uh, I was down there the day after the flooding. Uh, I know that Commissioner Warnick has been down there multiple times, um, as well as county representatives. Uh, we um, continue to work with them. Uh, the worst thing that could happen is another storm. We put them back in there and something happens, um, and this happens over again. So we wanna make sure that we're um, doing all that we can to prevent that as well as you know, give them a place to stay. So uh, we're working hard. I know our staff is working hard on that. I also wanna thank Judy for all the calls that she's received at Town Hall. Um, Rising Sun High School will be uh, inducting its first uh, alumni wall uh, next month. And I'm honored to be a part of that process, to be on the board uh, to ch help choose those that we honor uh, as specific alumni. Um, this will be great because kids will be able to see students um, that are, are doing outstanding things that came from the direct classrooms that they're in, um, that studied and ate lunch in the same um, lunchroom that they were in. Um, so we're excited about the alumni wall. Uh, it is coming together really well. Last but not least, uh, Spooktacular will be October the 23rd. It's going to be from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m and we will be working with uh, our local businesses to have them be a part of it as well. I know Bog Turtle has um, voiced interest in doing a uh, beer garden um, outside. Uh, I know our local businesses on Main Street also want to be a part of that. So there'll be both activities for children and families as well as adults. Um, so we look forward to that coming together. Uh, that is the conclusion of my report. Moving in forward into Commissioner comments, Commissioner Braun. I have no report. Commissioner Pearson. Um, Chief Peterson is away at uh, the chief's meeting this week. Um, he asked me to tell you that we now have our uniforms in and that we currently have four applicants for the positions that are open. Thank you, Commissioner Pearson. Commissioner Shepard. I report tonight. Commissioner Warnick. Uh, so we received, so uh, Public Works had just repaired the boardwalk at Veter uh, I'm sorry, at the dog park. Triangle and, park. Um, yeah, Triangle Dog Park. And uh, unfortunately, uh, the last storm when I went down there and saw the water up to the road, I kind of suspected that we were back in the same position. Um, so the boardwalk has been damaged again at uh, the dog park. This time we're going to anchor it into the ground. I think is the plan, so uh, it might take a little longer to get repaired, but um, you know, it is what it is. We're maybe put some, hopefully, put some posts into the ground, and because uh, the rest of it seems to survive just fine. It's just the one section that was, in theory, if we we built it as a floating boardwalk, not like floating in water, 
boardwalk, <laughs> <laughs> like a floating boardwalk in the sense of it wasn't anchored into the ground because we didn't think it needed to be anchored into the ground there. Um, I'm actually really shocked because that Shrex on top of it is pretty heavy and it sinks unlike the wood that's, you know, structure, but it's still not enough weight to uh, withstand um, or to stay under underwater. So it floated and tore off. Um, I think it did a little more damage this time than it did last time. And uh, so we're going to have to repair that again. Uh, there was also some additional damage there. Um, at one point, uh, I mean, it, it was a, the water in that park, like it, on the against the bridge, was almost up to the the top of the bridge. I mean, it was getting to the point. I've never actually. I I was shocked. It was like getting to the point of close to flowing, like probably building up to the point where it would flow over Mount Street, which was really phenomenal. Um, so that was a significant flood event. Obviously, as we know, uh, the water on Main Street during that same storm, uh, we had uh, people in trucks driving through the Main Street, which was one thing, and then people in small cars thinking that they had the same clearance as the lifted Dodge pickup. With you know, so um, they found out quickly they didn't. And the nice thing is the guys with the trucks were nice enough to back up and pull the cars out. Um, so you know we we pulled a few cars out of the water and then finally just stopped letting cars go through like forcing people to turn around because we were sick of fetching cars out of main street um it was actually like white water rapids over main street I've, i it was nothing like everything i've ever seen before there and we've had a lot of flooding there but i've never seen it like that it was it was pretty phenomenal um i was in the legion at one point and uh there was water blowing through the legion like it was a stream and we were moving all the boxes up to higher ground and um, I walked around the back side to see if we could sandbag the door and uh, the water was up in that, that back door that kind of faces Main Street on the corner there towards the stream uh, it was up two or three feet against that door so that was when I realized we were beyond sandbagging there at that point uh, because there was just too much water already in there so uh, it was that was quite an event um but with that uh we actually amazingly didn't really sustain any damages at uh veterans park again so we're we're doing pretty good over there it's just the dog park we seem to be taking a lot of damage but um that is my report thank you can thank i say something mr mayor sure first time in in all the time i've been up here the water on mason run was literally up and over the guardrail, yeah. yeah, which is probably 15 feet above where it normally is. Wow. Thank you, Commissioner Warnick. All right, upcoming town meetings. Our next town meeting will be September 28th, followed by October the 12th. You can see on the agenda online, as well as here, our yard waste, trash recyclables, and upcoming holidays, uh, as well as upcoming town events. Is there anything else to come before the board this evening? Hearing nothing, can I get a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Meeting adjourned.